We've got our first hands-on look at the new Peplink MaxBR2 Pro 5G, an upgrade from the older model now featuring the Qualcomm X65 modem. What's new? What makes it different? We've got all the details. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you an update on uh, the latest Peplink flagship that we recommend to the highest end of our audience, the Max BR2 Pro 5G. Now, we've been having this router in our arsenal for quite a while, and this is the latest version new as of March 2025 with a significant but pretty small upgrade. This is an always exactly the same as the old version of the Max PR2 Pro, the um, X62 modem equipped version that we've been testing since October 2023 with one tiny little change. They have switched from the Quectel modem module with an X62 uh, modem chip from Qualcomm to a uh, Telet modem module with an X65 modem chipset. So What's different? That everything else is the same. The same pricing, the same features, the same port. Everything else is the same. It's just a tiny change in the modem module. But for a certain audience, this could be significant. It is an upgrade and, well, and it costs the same. So if you're in the market and don't already have one, this is something to consider. So what is the difference between the X62 and X65? We'll get to that in a second, but first just want to give you a quick rundown of all the basics of the BR2 Pro. Um, before we dive into those differences. So the first off thing, the important thing about it, the BR2 Pro is that it is a dual 5G router. So it's got two completely independent online simultaneous with two different carriers, 5G modems. So that means eight 5G antenna ports, it comes with eight 5G antennas, or we recommend usually using an external antenna. And then it's got a Wi-Fi 6 Wi-Fi radio with two Wi-Fi antennas that you could plug in here or use an external antennas or external access points. And then, well, of course, a GPS, so you can do location tracking. Inside, it's got a pretty hefty CPU so that can do a gigabit per second a routing throughput. It's got a ton of all the user Peplink, usual Peplink advanced features. We've got a lot of uh, information that goes over those, particularly in our Peplink Resource Center over at the Mobile Internet Resource Center. And then, on the back, you've got a lot of ethernet ports. You've got uh, four gigabit ethernet LAN ports and then two gigabit ethernet, um, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, even faster, WAN ports, one of which can be switched back to use as a LAN port. So you've got 2.5 gigabit per second ethernet ports and then the one gigabit per second ethernet ports. You have a USB port for tethering. You've got a, a DC input that can take either the power from the AC supply that they include, or a wide range of direct wired DC inputs. And then for some special use cases, even an RS-232 serial port for integrating in with a different control system. So this is a very flexible Swiss Army knife. We've actually used our BR2 Pros to be connected to, I think some of our tests, we've done 11 different simultaneous WAN sources bonded together with Peplink Speed Fusion bonding technology. So this is kind of, in some ways, one of the best uh, Swiss Army knives you can have for a mobile internet setup. It is pricey though. It, the list price is $28.99 and that is staying the same. So they're upgrading the modems, keeping the price the same, but it is still at the very high end of what we consider is reasonable for the typical audience we have here at the Mobile Internet Resource Center. They do have much cheaper options just without the dual 5G. So that's kind of a rundown of what's staying the same. And we've got old coverage that goes into all those details. But so what is new in this 2025 version with an X65 modem? This content is made possible by our premium members over at the Mobile Internet Resource Center. We strive to create unbiased content for our audience. We are not sponsored. We're not driven by affiliate sales and we don't sell stuff. We are here to provide unbiased content. And for that, we are funded by our members, and our members get a lot of additional perks for their support. So please, if mobile internet is an important part of your lifestyle, consider supporting us. We just did a kind of a big deep dive on the state of 5G and the state of the cellular industry modems and why new modems are now just coming out to the uh, router market. So do take a look at that featured video we just put out recently, but in a nutshell, Qualcomm's modem lineup for routers has been jumping from the X55, which was actually in the first version of the BR2 Pro several years ago, to the X65 and 62 generation. These are two 
parallel modems of the same generation. The 65 is the high end and the 62 is kind of the mainstream lower end version of that modem. And and Peplink brought out the X62 version of this quite a while ago. The 65 is the true sequel to the 55, the one that's been out for a while, and it has some enhanced um, internal processing capabilities. It can handle, in a nutshell, it can handle 300 megahertz of spectrum across 3x 5G carrier aggregation. That's what the X65 can do. The X62, the one that is being replaced, can handle 120 megahertz of 5G spectrum across two channels of carrier aggregation. And then well, the um, older uh, X55, that is, we consider that obsolete and don't invest in that one, that could not do 5G carrier aggregation in a flexible manner. So it was really kind of not suitable for a lot of where the networks are right now. But so the, the jump from the 62 to the 65 is pretty minor. It's 120 megahertz of spectrum versus 300. So in certain areas, you could potentially see a significant download performance increase where there's carriers have deployed 3X carrier aggregation and have that much 5G spectrum to share. But at the moment in the United States, that basically means just T-Mobile. You know, T-Mobile is already pushing 5G carrier aggregation with three, four, even five channels of 5G at once. And in quite a few places, they're using bands 25, 41, and 71 simultaneously to give you maximum coverage and performance. The 62 can you only use two of those bands at one time. The 65 can use all three. So we're expecting, as we put this into testing, to find places where T-Mobile has a substantial speed advantage with the X65. On Verizon and AT&T, we're not expecting to see much of a speed advantage, but of course we will be testing that at the moment. But as those carriers do begin to deploy next generation technologies on their 5G networks, maybe we'll start to see a difference there over the years ahead. Much more future-proof with the 65. There is one other difference between the 62 and 65. I think this comes down to not the chip, but to the modem modules and how they were FCC certified. The 62 um, that Peplink is offering, the older model of this, supports 5G band N70. The 65 does not, the new model does not. N70 is a band that is only used by Dish Network, AKA Boost Mobile in the United States. So not of concern to too many people, but if you're one of the lucky few people who are, do have a Dish plan and are using it in your router, the new model will not be able to take advantage of that. Um, we're interested in testing that as well because we do have a Dish plan that we play with and test with. So that is one regression and is the, the dropping of band 70 in the new X65 model. And then the improvements is a lot more spectrum for potential download performance, particularly in the future and particularly on T-Mobile. Uh, upload performance we expect should be identical between the two of them. Neither one of these supports upload carrier aggregation and the ability to use multiple 5G bands for upload. Um, so we will also be testing that to see if there was any more subtle improvements once we have those together. So now that we have both an X62 and X65 of otherwise identical hardware, we're going to be doing some testing here at the Mobile Internet Resource Center and sharing that testing exclusively in our member forums over uh, on our website. So if you are a member, follow along there. We're going to do a few spot checks in some areas to see if we can see any substantial differences between these two different modems. Um, overall, our pre-assumption is that if you already have an X62 generation device, probably no reason to rush out and upgrade to an X65. But if you still have an X55 era router or a 4G era router, there's definitely good reasons to consider moving to an X65. And this is, we think, a, going to prove to be a preview as Peplink brings this X65 modem technology to other lower end, lower priced um, products in their product line. So even though the BR2 Pro might be a too high end and out of most people's budgets, we expect over the course of 2025, this will percolate down into more and more products now that the modules are available um, and apparently costing Peplink roughly the same, we'll see this percolate into other products from them. So potentially the BR1 Pro 5G will get upgraded at some point and others. So that is definitely something to keep your eye out on if you are considering um, Peplink hardware is 
looking for when they make the transition to the X65. And well, since there's so little, there's no actual visual way to tell them apart, the way you have to do that is to look at the model number. The model numbers with the 65 have a K in them, 5GK. The model numbers with the 62 have 5GN. So pay close attention to your model numbers to know what you're getting if you're shopping because online stores are making the transition now. There's old inventory and new inventory out there and it's probably worth your while unless you're using Dish Network to make sure you get the X65 models if you are shopping. One other thing we've already been getting questions about is, well, the X62 and X65, that's a modem generation that is several years old now. Um, you know, what about the X72 and X75, the, the more current latest router appropriate modem chipsets from Qualcomm? Why isn't that in routers? Are these things old technology already? And well, yeah, in some ways they are. Chips coming to the router market have to go through a lot of iterations and steps before they make it into products that are kind of heading in towards this prosumer and enterprise space. So the chips that go into smartphones, smartphones buy them by the millions and tens of millions, they get first dibs on all these newest, latest generation chips. Then before, it takes a while before the, the smartphone market is satisfied, and then modem module manufacturers that kind of take those chips and build them into modem modules that can be integrated into routers, take those chips, and then they have to go through a whole FCC certification process and carrier certification process. And then those get done, and then it goes out to the uh, router manufacturers who have a whole nother uh, set of hoops of FCC and carrier certification before they can legally bring these things to market. So there is a long built-in delay um, so we do expect that at some point, maybe late 2025 or into 2026, there will be X72 and X75, a new kind of next step of technology for uh, the router chipsets that will come to market that will potentially eclipse the um, X65. But as we've covered in, in the recent modem status of modems and cellular industry up, update video, the X72 is in some ways a step down from the X65 and the X75 then is the true sequel of it. So we're going to be in this kind of hybrid space where the 65 might be a really great choice for a while to come until the X75 percolates down. That might be quite a while out. So this is the, the, the latest in router technology. Um, and this is an update of what is new. And after this, we'll be installing this and putting this head to head with the old one. So if you are a member over at the Mobile Internet Resource Center, you'll be able to follow along and see what sort of differences we discover and how well our expectations of the 65 match the reality and our past experiences with the X62. So that's the latest from Peplink. Here is the new Max BR2 Pro 5G. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.